Number five, William Dale Archard. William Dale Archard worked in the medical field as an attendant, and he wasn't lucky in love. Over the course of 15 years, he went to the altar seven times. Things took a tragic turn in 1956 when his fourth wife, Zella, died after two months of marriage from a mysterious illness. His fifth wife, Juanita, also got sick and mysteriously died in March 1958. He married again, and that marriage ended as well. However, this time it ended in a divorce. Perhaps hoping seven was the lucky number for him, he married his seventh wife, Mary Brinker Arden, but she died on November 3, 1966. After the third death, the police started to investigate Archard. They discovered that all three of his dead wives showed symptoms of hypoglycemia, and this is often caused by an overdose of insulin. Insulin was something Archard would have been very familiar with with his work in the medical field. On July 27, 1967, Archard was arrested and he was charged with three murders, that of his fourth and seventh wife and his nephew, who he also poisoned. He was convicted and given the death penalty, which was reduced two years later to a life sentence. While he was in charge, Archer is also believed to be responsible for three other deaths, the poisoning death of two of his friends and his fifth wife. He died in prison in 1977 at the age of 65. Number 4. George Joseph Smith On July 13, 1912, George Joseph Smith lost his first wife when she drowned in a bathtub in her home in Kent, England. This was just five days after she had written in her will to have her money go to Smith, who was using an alias. Not long after that, Smith was married again under a different name. His second wife was Alice Smith and she too was found dead in the bathtub. She had drowned in December 1913. A year after that, in December 1914, Smith's third wife, Margaret Elizabeth Lloyd, was found dead in the bathtub. All three deaths were ruled accidents. Since they were all ruled accidents and Smith used different names with each marriage, police never connected the crimes. However, after the third death, the man who rented the room to Smith and his second wife, Alice Smith, was reading the newspaper and he knows similarities between the deaths of Alice Smith and Margaret Elizabeth Lloyd, so he wrote to the police. The police looked into the drowning deaths and realized that Smith was responsible for all three of them. And the case was dubbed the Brides in the Bath Murders. Smith was convicted and he was hanged for the three murders on August 13, 1915. Number 3. Jack Reeves Jack Reeves was an Army Master Sergeant that lived in Texas. His first marriage was annulled after a few months and then he met his second wife, Sharon. They were married in 1961. In 1967, the couple was living in Verona, Italy, where Reeves was stationed with the army. While there, he shot a man to death because Reeves claimed that the man was spying on him and his wife in their bedroom. Reeves was convicted of manslaughter, but amazingly, then-President Lyndon Johnson was able to convince the Italian Prime Minister to have the charges dropped. Now back stateside, the couple had two children and were living in Texas. On July 20th, 1978, after 18 years of marriage, Reeves claimed that he found Sharon dead by her own hand. She was lying naked on the bed and shot herself in the chest with a shotgun while one of her sons was outside playing. There was a suicide note and a will, and the death was ruled a suicide. Eight years after the death of his second wife, Reeves was again at the funeral of a wife. Mae Young was from South Korea, and she drowned. Mae Young, who wasn't a strong swimmer, was apparently floating on an air mattress on a lake when she rolled off and drowned. Despite bruising around the face, the death was ruled an accident. Now twice a widower, Reeves went to the Philippines in 1987 to pick up his mail-order bride, 18-year-old Emilita. The relationship was rocky, but it did produce a son. In October 1994, Emilita went missing and Reeves said that she ran off. With his current wife missing, the police began to look into the deaths of his first two wives. Sharon was exhumed and they concluded that there was no way that she died the way that Reeves said she did. In March 1995, he was charged with her murder. A year after Amelita disappeared, in October 1995, a hunter stumbled upon a shallow grave not far from where Reeves' second wife, Mai Young, drowned. It's unclear how or when she died, but she had been buried there for about a year, and Reeves was seen camping in the area at the time of her disappearance. He was convicted of both the murders of Sharon and Amelita, and he was sentenced to 99 years in prison. Number 2. Gerald Hand In the mid-1960s, Gerald Hand met his first wife, Donna Anderson, and they married in 1968. 
The marriage lasted until March 1975 when Han claimed he came home and found Donna in the basement with a dry cleaner's bag over her head and wrapped around her neck was a spark plug wire. Her death was ruled a suicide and Han collected some insurance money. In 1977, Han married again. This time it was a woman named Lori Willis. Two years into the marriage, Willis told her friends and family that she was unhappy, but before she could leave Han, she was found dead in the basement. Like Donna, she had a dry cleaner bag over her head, but instead of being hanged, she was shot twice in the head. Again, it was ruled a suicide, and Han was able to get life insurance money for the death. Han married a third time, and that wife got out of the marriage alive. Unfortunately, the fourth wife wasn't as lucky. In October 1992, Han married Jill Randolph, a widow with three daughters. By 2002, just like every other woman who had ever been married to Han, Jill was unhappy and wanted to leave him. On January 15, 2002, according to Han, he heard Jill scream, so he ran to her. He saw a figure of a man in the hall and he fired a gun at him, killing him. The figure turned out to be Han's friend and the best man at his second wedding. Walter Welch. Han's official story was that he had killed his best friend in self-defense after Welch had killed Jill. Of course, that wasn't true at all. Han had Welch break into his house and kill his first two wives. Welch was going to talk to the police, so Han used the opportunity to kill his current wife and silence Welch. After the murders, the police looked into Han's financial records and discovered that he had 33 credit cards and he was over $200,000 in debt. He was convicted and sentenced to death in May 2003. He has never been charged in the deaths of his first two wives. Number 1. Robert Spangler In the mid-1950s, Robert Spangler married his high school sweetheart, Nancy. The couple had two children, first a son named David, which was followed two years later by a daughter named Susan. On December 30th, 1979, 45-year-old Nancy, 17-year-old David, and 15-year-old Susan were all found shot to death in their Denver home. There was a suicide note that supposedly had been written by Nancy, claiming responsibility for the murder of her two children. When Robert Spangler was originally interviewed by the police, he said that he was at work when his family was murdered. After gunshot residue was found on his hand, he changed his story to say that when he returned home, he found his family dead and he handled the gun. The police believed him and the three deaths were ruled a murder-suicide. Spangler remarried in 1988, but got divorced a short time later. Oddly enough, that wife would die when they did get back together in 1994. It appears that it was a drug overdose, but the case has never been looked into by law enforcement. However, going back to 1990, Spangler married for the third time. This wife's name was Donna Sudling, and in 1993, the couple was visiting the Grand Canyon. Sudling, who was known for her fear of heights, was apparently posing near a cliff. Spangler said that he turned away from her for a few moments, and when he turned back, she had vanished. Sudling had fallen 200 feet to her death. Jump ahead to September 2000, and again Spangler is married. During this time, Spangler also found out he had lung and brain cancer. Police decided that this would be a good time to ask about the deaths of his first family and his third wife. That is when he calmly admitted that he shot his wife, his daughter, and his son. When his son wouldn't die quickly enough, he smothered him with a pillow. As for the third wife, he said he simply pushed her off the cliff. Spangler pleaded guilty and he was given a life sentence almost 22 years to the day of the murder of his first family. Thanks for watching Criminally Listed. We hope you found that interesting. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We post a new video every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks again for watching.